After I found that the memory chip in the Edge Stick module is physically write protected, I was very doubtful Sony would have firmware in the Edge controller to write to the memory chip. But there was one thing that gave me a little hope. Here on the Stick module PCB, one of these two unpopulated component locations, the one on the right, goes to pin 3 of the memory chip, the write protect pin. Currently these two parts are connected to pin 3, a 4.7k ohm resistor pulling it to ground, and a very small capacitor. But if the 4.7k ohm resistor was moved to this empty location, the memory chip write protect line would be pulled high and it would be writable from the controller. So why is this part location even here? Is it possibly used for the development kit version? Any ideas, please leave a comment. Whatever the reason for it being there, to me it did indicate Sony at least thought about writing to the memory chip solely through the 14 pin connector. Now I didn't have to wait long to get some of my questions answered. A day or so after the last video, I got a couple of comments about software to calibrate the edge. Now I was more than a little skeptical as I had just received my edge controller and there was no contact to connect to the write protect test point. So I had to take a closer look at this. Well, I am happy to be wrong about this. Sony does have the firmware in the controller to write to the stick modules. And that is good on Sony there. What is not good on Sony is not publishing the HID report IDs for the controller. And that makes the work by the AL and Louis 20041 to give us the calibration software so incredible. I'll put links to Louis 20041's GitHub and the AL's calibration website in the description. Great thanks to both of them. Now the way the stick modules come, the controller can't write the calibration data to them. But with a minor modification to the stick modules, the controller can now be calibrated just like a regular DualSense. And I'm going to show two ways to make the modification. For this first method, you are going to need a soldering iron with a very small tip. And more stable hands than mine would sure help. If you have hot air equipment for mounting O2 O1 devices, then this is definitely the method to use. I've already put some fresh solder on the pads, and now I'm going to put a bit of flux down. I don't have any O2 O1 size parts. This would be the perfect spot for an O2 O1 zero ohm jumper here. So instead of that, I'm going to use a very thin tinned wire. This is one of the strands from a 26 gauge stranded wire, probably around 34 gauge. It's tiny. And good, it's soldered. And I didn't hit any of the other parts. That looked easier than it is. The size of the part that goes on these pads is around 0.6 millimeters long by 0.3 millimeters wide. Very difficult to solder with a soldering iron. And I'm working under a microscope and it's still hard. I'm not pressing down very hard with the knife. Hard enough I'm not pulling on the pad, but not hard enough to cut into the board. I'll wiggle the wire back and forth a bit. A bit more sticking off than I would like. I'll push it back out of the way. I don't want it shorting to any of the pin 1 pads. I'll clean a bit of the flux off. I will test to make sure it's connected and not shorted to anything it shouldn't be shorted to. Pin 3 of the memory chip is now supposed to be connected to the chip's voltage supply. And it is. And it should not be shorted to ground. And it's not. And I'm not shorted to pin 2, so everything should be good. This is my preferred way to mod the right protect line. Well, my preferred way would be with a 0201 zero ohm jumper. Or better yet, pull the 4.7k ohm pull down resistor and put in a 4.7k ohm pull up resistor. I'll order some of both next time I order parts. For this next method, you don't need anything very special for a soldering iron. The iron tip used to solder in the new joystick should be good. But you will need some Kapton tape and some copper tape. I think you could get by with some 34 to 38 gauge copper wire instead of the copper tape. The complications with this method are centered around this area of the PCB. The bottom plastic cover is flush against the PCB in this area, 
and I would rather not cut away any of the plastic as it's holding in the joystick. First thing I need is a very thin strip of copper tape. If I could cut a width of 0.03 to 0.04 inches, that would be great. I'm a bit wider than that, but I will make do. This Kapton tape is about 1 8 of an inch wide, and I'll put one end of it right up against the positive supply test point. And press it down good. Then I'll put another strip right up against the right protect test point. Again, pressing it down. I did cut this a little thick, but I'll put one end on this test point and press it down. This tape is so old the adhesive is about non existent. The section that needs to be the flattest is from the right protect test point to about the middle of the four joystick switch leads. I'll cut it to length. I will put some flux on the end of the tape. If the tape is new, might not need it, but it won't hurt. Then solder the tape to the test point. This is the end that needs to be as flat as possible. I've tinned the tape and put new solder on the right protect test point, along with a tiny bit of flux. Then wipe the tip trying to press down the tape as flat as possible at the connection. Then I will press the tape in the area of concern as flat as I can. Okay, that shouldn't add much space to the bottom cover. I will test with the meter to make sure the connection is good and I didn't short anything out. That is setting pretty flat. I think you could get by with a very thin wire, but the tape seems to be ideal. Using either method, now the write protect pin on the memory chip will be pulled high and the controller can now write to it. One corner of the bottom looks like it might be spread away from the PCB a tiny bit. I'll see how it fits. Okay, for the big test. Fits great. No binding at all. That should be fine. I'll speed through the calibrations. It's now the same as the DualSense, with the exception of some slightly different message dialogues. I'll follow the prompts for center calibration and then range calibration, and then save the changes permanently. And again, permanently is not permanent. It only lasts till the next time you run the calibration program. I've replaced the ALPS joystick with the Ghoulie Kit TMR joysticks. The sensor housing on the Ghoulie Kit are larger than the potentiometers on the ALPS, and they barely fit in the stick module. I can just get the PCB in place because one of the sensors is bumping into some of the plastic of the case, but it does fit. Overall, I would say the Ghoulie Kit don't have as good a return to center as the ALPS, which makes sense as they don't have quite as much tension. But centering is still very good. Of course, the circularity of the Ghoulie Kit is much better than the Alps. And these seem to work in the edge the same way they work in the DualSense. On a very sad note for me, my favorite thumb knobs, the ones that come with the Ghoulie Kit joystick kit, will not work in the edge stick module. The knob is just too tall. I haven't tried to cut down the shaft to lower the knob, it would have to be cut down a lot. And by just looking at it, I don't think there would be enough shaft space to drop the knob enough. Maybe now with the calibration of the edge possible, Ghoulie Kit will make some knobs that fit the stick module. There's always hope. One final item. I don't see any need to re-enable the write protection. The controller has worked fine with the memory write enabled. The firmware is in the controller to write to the memory. And Sony has a spot on the stick module PCB to write enable the memory chip. Why make life difficult? Thank you for watching.